Dreallday.com. What's up, everybody? Dre Baldwin, Dreallday.com. A question that I hear often from athletes, young athletes in particular, is the issue of a player who knows they're really good. You practice a lot. You put in all the work. Like you do all the drills. You know you can make certain shots and do certain dribbles and or you play really good when you're playing against certain people that you're comfortable with, like at your home court, wherever that may be, or playing with your friends or in practice with your team. But then when you get in the game, whether that means there's a whole lot of people watching who you don't know, you're playing against people you don't know, you're not playing against your friends anymore, or it's a high pressure situation and your coach is yelling or you just feel pressure for whatever reason, you're not actually performing at your highest level. Then you get in the game and you start making mistakes that you don't normally make. You're not playing at the level that you know you can play at. So how can you fix that? And I've addressed that in a lot of different ways where I talk kind of about the mental side of it because what a lot of players don't need is more how to. A lot of you players, y'all already know all the drills. Y'all know all the workouts. Y'all know all the routines and the techniques and the tutorials for doing this stuff. In addition to my stuff, I mean, how many hundreds of guys is out there putting out basketball tutorials these days? So you don't need more tutorial. What you need is a way to overcome that because it's not a physical thing for all you players to understand. It's not physical, your problem. Your problem is mental. So what we need to do is address the mental side of it because if you can change the way you're thinking, then you can unlock your physical potential. So I hope all y'all understand that and really listen to what I'm going to say here because it's a very simple way that you can start to overcome this. So this is what you do. So let's say you're a player who's coming into a game and when you know you got skills, you know you can finish with both hands, you can hit shots, you got a nice crossover, you can handle the ball against pressure, and you do all these things in certain situations, but in others you're not. So what is happening is you're getting in the game. When you get in the game, what happens in your mind, either consciously or subconsciously, you start thinking about the fact that you've messed up before or you're nervous or that this guy on the other team is better than you or the coach is putting pressure on you or you're worried about the fans and what they're going to think about you. You start thinking about all these pressure and negativity. And all it does is create a cycle in your mind. You start saying you think something negative to yourself, then your body starts to give you what your mind starts to do when you give your mind a negative thought of any any form all it's going to do is reinforce that thought because your mind is a servant your mind is like a personal assistant the best personal assistant ever hired in life because it does exactly what you tell it to do 100 percent of the time and never fails if you t give your mind a negative thought all your mind is going to do is find more negative thoughts that directly support the thought that you gave it so if you start to think oh i'm nervous and I might miss a layup and the fans might laugh at me. All, the, all your mind's going to do is come up with reasons for why that might happen. Oh, you're nervous? That's because you about to get the ball stolen from you. Oh, you don't play this well in these situations? That's what you tell your mind. Your mind's going to say, okay, that's because you shot an air ball in this game three weeks ago. And your coach is going to pull you out the game if you turn the ball over. And your teammates don't respect you and they don't believe in you. They don't think you should be on the court anyway. So you shouldn't even be out there. And then, and then you just say you think another thought, oh, you thought about how the fans might laugh at you? Oh, that's because you're going to miss a layup the first time you get the ball, then you're going to dribble the ball off your foot, and then somebody's going to dunk on you. And your mind starts to give you all those thoughts. And as those thoughts start to come in your head, what happens when you think about things? Your body starts to manifest everything that you think. So anything that you think about eventually becomes your actions. So those could be things you talk about in the game. You're probably not going to be speaking that much. Those become your actions. Your mind holds that thought long enough in your head, you're going to actually go out there and do it. So if you think about missing a layup enough, what are you going to do when you get a chance to make a layup? You're going to miss the layup because you thought about it so much. And then what does that do? After you miss the layup, your mind notices that you missed the layup and says, oh, see, confirms exactly what I thought. I'm nervous and I'm not good enough and we about to lose this game and the fans are going to laugh at me and the coach is going to yell at me. So it just recreates itself in a cycle. You give yourself this one small little thought idea that says, I'm going to fail or I'm going to mess up in some way, shape, or form. Then your mind reinforces it by giving you all the reasons why whatever you just said is absolutely right. And then you actually go out there and manifest it by physically doing it. So here is how you overcome it. Take the things that you're messing up at. So let's just say, we'll just take some examples that I hear from players all the time. All right. So you know you can make layouts with both hands. But when you get in the game, you always get the shot block or the ball gets stripped from you. Or you can't make a layup in traffic when there's a lot of bodies around. I hear that from players all the time. So here's what you do. What you need to do, and this is not on the court thing. This is something that you need to do off the court and it's something that you need to do every day. It needs to become a practice, it becomes a habit, and you drill it into your subconscious mind to the point that it becomes part of you and you won't even have to think about it. 
All right, so what you do, let's say you're missing layups in traffic, you get stripped in traffic, you get your shot blocked. You need to write this down. So write it down on your phone or write it down on a piece of paper, however you like to keep notes. Something that you can keep handy. So all y'all got a phone, so write it somewhere in your phone in the notes app or Evernote or wherever you can keep something that you can look at every single day. Email to yourself, whatever. So let's say you always miss layups in traffic. So you're gonna write down, take the things that you're messing up at, and you're gonna write them down in the affirmative, in the positive, in a way that is the picture of what exactly you want it to be. Not what it is, but how you see it. So if you're a player who's always missing layups, you're gonna write something down like this. I'm a dynamic guard who can get into the paint and finish in traffic. So if you're always missing layups, you're gonna write it in the exact way that you want it to be. Not the way that it is, not the way that it has been, but the way that you want it to be in its most perfect form. So if you're a player who's always missing, then you write it like I'm a dy you write it like I just said. I'm a dynamic guard who gets into the paint and finishes in traffic around and over top of defenders. So write it out kind of how if you're if you're talking about finishing in the paint, write it out. Think of the best player you know for finishing in the paint, who's your similar position or stature or body type. And then you write it out as if you were describing that guy. So me, if I'm thinking of a small player, a, a smaller player on the court who's good at finishing in traffic, I'm going to think of Kyrie Irving. So how would you describe Kyrie Irving's ability to finish in the paint? Think about that, put it into words, and write it down. And then you talk, you say it, replace Kyrie Irving with you. So instead of saying Kyrie Irving, you say I or me. So if I was to describe Kyrie Irving's ability to finish in the paint, I'd say he's a dynamic guard who's quick with amazing handles, who can finish in the paint around or over any defender. So you take that exact same thing, take out Kyrie Irving, and you put yourself. So you can put your full name, you can put I, since you're going to be reading it, saying it to yourself, or put me or whatever, first person. Y'all get the point. Let's say you're having a problem making open three-pointers. You get open from the three-point line and you always miss. And then you get nervous, so you miss even more. And then every time you get the ball, you only want to shoot it because you're nervous because you miss and you keep recreating it. So who's a good outside shooter? Let's say Stephen Curry. So you say something like this. I am a guard who can create and make my own shots from anywhere on the floor and in deadly from three-point range. Defenders never want to leave me open because they know it is a guaranteed bucket. That's how I've described Stephen Curry. So you replace Stephen Curry with yourself. And then you write that out. That's sentence number two. And then you take whatever else you're having a problem with. Let's say you're athletic and you can dunk, but you never seem to dunk in the game because you're nervous and you don't get you don't play as aggressively and you don't get to the rim the way you do when you're in practice and when you're playing with your friends and when you're playing pickup at the park as you do when you're playing at your school or for your team or in an organized, more organized situation. So who's a great guy finishing at the paint and getting into the, getting to the rim? Let's say LeBron James. So how would you describe LeBron James' ability to get to the rim and finish? I say I am a powerful, strong player who attacks in straight lines, gets to the rim, and will finish aggressively by any means necessary. So you take that same thing, the way think of the guy. So a simple practice for this, because I can't take every single situation all y'all are having as far as the problems you have on the court. But this is the simple way to do it. So any skill that I haven't mentioned so far, I only mentioned three, is probably 50,000 if I asked every player out there. Take this situation that you're messing up at, right? Then you think of a player who you know of, whether that be some dude at your park, whether it be your brother, whether it be some dude in the NBA, and you... Describe how they do it. Describe, tell me how you would describe how that person does it. So if I say describe to me Stephen Curry's ability to make three-pointers in detail. Describe it in a way that would be vivid, a way that I could really see it. If I never saw Stephen Curry play and I said describe to me how Stephen Curry plays as an outside shooter. I want you to describe that in vivid detail. And then you put that down and then replace Stephen Curry with yourself. So if I said, describe to me, I'd say, hey, yo, I never saw LeBron James play. Tell me about his ability to finish at the rim because I heard he was good at it. Think about how you would describe that. If you had to describe it to somebody in a way that made them absolutely have to go see LeBron James. Like, I don't mean like a basic, like, LeBron's a damn good finisher. Yeah, we know that. But I want you to describe it in a way like you were trying to sell it to them. Like, you want somebody to be a fan of LeBron James without ever having seen him play before. How would you describe his ability to finish at the rim? You describe it that way. Then take his name out and put your name in it. So who's, who's another player we can think of who's good? Let's say you want to block shots like Anthony Davis. How would you describe his ability to block shots? You And again, 
you got to sell it. You really got to sell it. The reason why I'm telling you that you have to sell it is this, ladies and gentlemen. The reason you have to sell it is because you're selling this to yourself. Because if I say you are a, so if I'm describing Anthony Davis, I'm going to say you are a long-limbed defender who patrols and protects the paint and is a threat to block, challenge, or alter every single shot taken within eight feet of the basket. That right there, if I paint that picture to somebody's mind, they're like, damn, whoever that dude is, nobody can get to the rim when he's on the court. That's the way you got to describe it. You're dynamic, you're quick, you're athletic, you're explosive. Any shot that's taken within eight feet of the basket, you're going to be around and you're either going to block it, you're going to alter it, or you're going to dissuade that person from even shooting it in the first place. The reason that you got to put it out there that way, the way that you're describing it, like you're really trying to sell somebody on the idea is because you're selling these ideas when you replace xyz nba players name with your name you're selling these ideas to yourself you're selling these ideas to your subconscious mind your subconscious mind is the mind that right now when you're listening to the words i'm thinking your conscious mind is listening to me because you're actively listening to what i'm saying and you're processing every word your subconscious mind is the mind is deep down that you ever have a thought just pop up into your mind out of nowhere like you think to yourself oh damn i should call such and such or i should call my cousin i need to talk to my grandma oh yeah i forgot to get that stuff from my car or oh yeah I got to do that paper for class and it's something that you hadn't even been thinking about is no reason for that thought to pop up into your mind that's your subconscious mind at work the only way you get to your subconscious mind is you have to give it consistent pictures of exactly what you want so the reason that some of you players out there keep messing up in games keep missing layups keep not having your confidence in a pressure situation keep not playing well when you're playing in unfamiliar situations you know why it's because you've sold the idea to your subconscious mind that you can't you sold the idea that you're going to mess up and that's why you keep doing it because the subconscious mind starts delivering those thoughts every time it's time for you to perform so if you want to change that you got to start by changing the pictures that your subconscious mind has so that when you give it a conscious thought like hey i'm the best player out here your subconscious mind has some cash to pick up on and say oh yeah you know what we got some ideas for that that you've been feeding me every single day oh i shoot like description of stephen curry i drive to the basket like description of lebron i finish at the rim i finish in the paint even though i without dunking i finish in the paint under the rim like kyrie irving or i block shots like anthony davis or i draw fouls like your description of james harden or I'm, af I'm an athletic, explosive guard like Russell described Russell Westbrook. Or whatever. Whatever player you want to think of. Or I can shoot out of the high post like Paul Pierce or Dirk Nowitzki. Or whatever player. Or I can handle the ball like Allen Iverson. Or I can shoot fadeaway jump shots like description of Michael Jordan. So you take whatever player does the thing best that you keep messing up on. And you write it down. You must write it down. This is, most, this is very, very important. I should have said this at the beginning. I did say it, but I didn't emphasize it. You must write it down. When you write something down, you commit to it. It's more of a commitment when you write it down than if you just say it. Write it down on your phone, write it down on a piece of paper, and put it somewhere where you can see it every day. And every single day, this is what you do. You go to the mirror, and this is you don't have to be in the gym to do this. You go to the mirror, the bathroom mirror, your bedroom mirror, your car rear view mirror, somewhere where you it's just you. This ain't about this ain't nobody else's business but yours. And you say these things out loud to yourself. You look yourself in the mirror and you say it out loud. I'm a dynamic guard. I'm a dynamic undersized guard who can finish at the paint over, over and around any defenders, even in traffic. That's the description of Kyrie. I'm a guard who can handle the ball, create my own shot off the dribble, and I'm a deadly outside shooter who defenders never want to leave open. Describing Stephen Curry. I'm the go-to scorer who can get to the paint, finish from the outside, and create my own shot with crossovers, step backs, and ball handling moves, and I can draw fouls at, at will, your description of James Harden. And then you take every player who has a skill that you need to improve on, even if you're good at it already, you want to get better, take that player who's the best at it in the world, the best player in your opinion, you describe how you would describe that guy and just make it about you. And you read that out loud to yourself every single day. And this, and understand that you can apply this to anything. So even if you don't play basketball, you're watching this video, you could take, if there's a businessman you know who's really good at business and you want to kind of emulate that person's success or some part of their success, because you could take 20 different business people and you could be, you could take a conglomerate of all their skills and make it yours. So you say, 
I am a, a cutthroat negotiator who always negotiates the best deal for my business, gets business done. I'm respected by all the people I sit at the boardroom table with and my company depends on me to come out with the best deal for myself and for my employees and for my company's bottom line. You can do the same thing for your business. You can do the same thing if you cut grass for a living, if you dig ditches, if you got a, a landscaping, landscaping company, if you work in a factory, if you repair computers, whatever it is that you do, you just find someone or describe even an imaginary person who's really good at what you want to get better at, what you're not doing your best at. And you say, you are that person. I am blank. Fill in the blank with the description of that person doing it how they do it. Because they already good. So you're not lying. So you're just basically taking their skills and making them yours. And you got to sell that idea to your subconscious mind. And the other thing is you got to do this every day. This is not a one-time thing. You can't do this once and say, all right, I did it, Dre. What happened to my success? Why didn't it come? You got to do this every single day. Same way you get up and brush your teeth every day. Same way you go to the bathroom every day. Same way you eat every day. Same way you sleep every day. You got to take time. I don't care if it's only two minutes because depending on how many you use, this might only take you one to two minutes. You got one to two minutes for your future, for your success. You do this every single day. It becomes a habit. It'll get to the point where you memorized it. You won't even have to read it no more. You'll just know it in your mind. You still got to do it. In the mirror every single day. This could be right before practice. This could be in a car before you drive. This could be when you first wake up in the morning. And you can also do this twice a day. If you want to do it twice as fast, do it every day twice. As soon as you wake up and before you go to bed. Because the last thing that you give your mind before you go to bed is what your mind's going to marinate on the entire time you're sleeping. So if you get in an argument with somebody before you go to bed, that argument, maybe not the exact situation, but the feelings, the energy of that argument is going to be what your mind works on all night while you're sleeping. If you watch a basketball game before you go to sleep, your mind's going to be working on whatever you noticed and perceived in that basketball game all night. If you're on the internet talking to somebody before you go to bed, whatever y'all talking about, whatever energy you're getting from that conversation, you're going to be, your mind's going to work on that. Your subconscious mind, because my, your conscious mind's not working while you're asleep. That's because you sleep. If your conscious mind was working, you wouldn't be sleeping. Your subconscious mind goes to work when you're sleeping. And think about this. You spend a third of your life sleep. So imagine what you could get done if you give your subconscious mind the right tools to work with for a third of your life. Where would you be if you started making that a daily practice? So I hope this is good information that all you can use. Again, this is it is a sport discussion, but it don't have to be. If you don't play ball, you can use this for anything. If you're an author, if you make if you work at the, in the kitchen at a restaurant, whatever it is you do for a living, you can apply this. You find or imagine the person who does it the best. You start applying it to yourself. Give it to your subconscious mind to work on. Let it marinate on it. Feed it to it every single day because that's the only way you build a habit. If it was as easy as doing it once, everybody would be great, right? You got to do it every single day until you're doing it without thinking about it. Every day. It never stops. Work on your game. DreAllDay.com. Thanks for checking out this video. Make sure you follow all my top content up here. Follow me on all your favorite social networks right over here. And make sure you are subscribed to catch all the new content I put on on this channel every single day.